Harpon Sports, the bar, podcast, audio, media, radio network. Follow, share, like, subscribe at Harpon Sports, Twitter, Instagram. Of course, Harpon Sports Facebook page, harponsports.com, Harpon Sports, the YouTube channel. Always, you can check us out, Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Buzzsprout. Well, what do we have for you on this episode? A little Urban Decay. Urban Meyer, that is a mess. and It's going to get worse and worse and worse. Or is it? We're going to look at that. Also, you know, Tom Brady's return to New England. I was trying to find a comp. What's, what's the equivalent of this? What could we see that's the equivalent of this? So we're going to look at that as well. And also the postseason's here. So the Oracle of October. I'm going to look at what I see taking place. Also, quick little snippet. We're, movies are back out. Like we've been waiting years, 18 months for like movie movies, like real movies. And oops, be careful there, Seth. Many Saints in Newark. Oh, baby. The potential here is obscene. So we're going to look at that as well. All right. Um, Urban Meyer, this is a mess. You know, now you have calls for firing him. I, Look, this is so ugly and so nasty, but you have to take a step back and realize what's the most important part of the Jaguars. Who's the most important person in the Jaguars on the on the whole in the whole organization? It's Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. Who's the best person to guide and lead Trevor Lawrence during this? How is Trevor Lawrence gonna ever think if you're Urban Meyer and you sit down Trevor Lawrence? Now I want you to listen to me here, son. I'm, yeah, right. You gonna teach me how to play grab ass? What are you gonna teach me? So Again, I like Urban Meyer as a coach. Is he a trustworthy human being? Obviously, no. And how does this end well? The advice that I always try to give people that are trying to talk themselves into something, how does this end well? And the answer is it doesn't. It doesn't. And if you if you were a college coach, he'd be cooked because of the way it looks, how it looks, the optics, the board of directors, the athletic directors, the school president, the illusion that it's an education of higher learning, all garbage. In the NFL, it's like, well, they're pros. They're pros, exactly. They're pros. And, you know, if he were 3-0, and it'd be one thing. But he is not. And it was already rough sledding enough as it is. And it's just going to get tougher and tougher and tougher. And you look at organizations that are habitually bad. They have one thing in common. Think about the organizations that are habitually bad. As in bad all the time. The Browns were this way until a year ago. Habitually bad. The Lions are habitually bad. The Jaguars are habitually bad. Who in the NBA? The Timberwolves, habitually bad. The Jets, habitually bad. And they usually all have the same thing in common. Look, Shot Khan's owned the Jaguars for a decade now almost. They've had one playoff run. It was a great, great run. He hired Dave Caldwell. That didn't work out. Dave Caldwell hired Gus Bradley. That didn't work out. They replaced him with Doug Marone. That didn't work out. Blow those guys out. Hire Trent Baalke. Hire Urban Meyer. This is not working. The Lions are the worst franchise in the NFL the last 60 years. Something in common. Same people have owned it. The Ford family. Shot Khan's the prime example. If you throw money at it, it'll fix it. And it doesn't work. You hire smart football people and you get out of the way. I remember a couple years ago, I suggested, even though he's 60 now, still think it would have worked, that they should have sat down with Ozzie Newsom and paid him $15 million a year. Ozzie Newsom built the Baltimore Ravens, retired a couple years ago. I had to sat down Ozzie Newsom and said, how much were you making there your last year in Baltimore? Like $4 million. We'll pay you 15 It's amazing how people don't value the person making all the draft picks as important as the people that they're picking. NBA teams, you know, Phil Jackson's making $15 million a year as a coach of the Lakers. And I, to me, the general manager that's putting all this together is equally as important, isn't he? And Trent Baalke, what happened with Trent Baalke and Jim Harbaugh? The Jaguars are a gigantic mess. 
and they've got a generational talent at quarterback, and they're going to screw it up. Ah, uh, everybody's overreacting. Are they? Are they now? Ask yourself this. Can you afford to wait and see? If you're the Jaguars, can you afford to wait and see? Well, winning will fix this. Yeah. You see that happening? It's going to get worse and worse and worse. And now it becomes one of these things where it's the, I told you so, you can't tell me what to do. This is going to work. We're going to figure this out. He apologized. And then you had the other camera where he was grabbing ass in the other angle. It's it, it's just bad. It's bad. Well, then you can go coach USC. You kidding me? This would be it for Urban. It would be at least. I shouldn't say it would be it entirely. He'd never get a job in the NFL again. Or there'd be some desperate SEC team to hire him, you bet. You don't think LSU would fire Ed Orgeron and hire Urban Meyer? They'd do it in a heartbeat. Would Urban want it? Don't know. Don't know if he'd want it or not. Ohio State was the, I mean, that was the, that was cruise control. You have to beat Michigan, Penn State every now and then. Beat Penn State every other year. Owned Michigan. But that was even to run from a scandal, wasn't it? So, it's a mess. And it's an ugly situation. And it's not going to fix itself. And you can play the us against the world card. Go for it. It, I've learned certain things as I've gotten older. Is that if you think something's going to fix itself, it's not. There are certain things that are emotionally high and emotionally low. If you just... Take it easy. Things become more crystal clear. But I do know this, just like the Don Imus situation, just when things start to snowball, like with Paterno, when things start to snowball, boy, an avalanche never stops itself. Avalanche comes down the mountain, right? Never goes, eh, we're good. It just keeps building and building and building. And that's what's going to happen with this. You know, they come out, well, how long is Urban Meyer the story for? Because coaches preach, don't be a distraction, don't be a distraction, don't be a distraction. And as a coach, you can chalk it up, oh, they're just kids. Oh, it's just a player, he's just a distraction. All right, well, look, they've got this, okay, we were able to fix this week. Because you have, think about this, as an NFL roster, you have 53 guys. One guy screws up, you got 52 other that you can pivot to. Quarterback's a little bit more difficult, but you can pivot to somebody else. Collegiately, the rosters are even bigger. Somebody makes a mistake, you go bench him, get another four or five-star guy waiting in the wings. As a head coach in the NFL, you got nowhere to go. It's you. It's your culture, your team. What's amazing about this is they just built that indoor, or just agreed to build that indoor practice facility and all that stuff because Urban is trying to emulate the college game in the NFL. That's why they've got that indoor practice facility they're going to build because it's just like what you see at Ohio State, what they're building in Florida, what they build all across the country. That's a mess. And let's say they come out and they win this weekend. Okay. Now what? And, you know, before you can sit there and say, well, it's nobody's business, it's nobody's business. If I am the Jacksonville Jaguars and I'm Shad Khan and I have a $2 billion piece of property and the guy that's in charge of making sure that property is successful, what do you mean it's nobody's business? The taxpayer, and this is what I, this is what pisses me off about this. The taxpayers in Duval County and in Jacksonville, right? They are on the lam for what is a hundred million dollars for this practice place that they're building. The, the sir, so they're on the lam for that. That's what Urban wanted. They're kicking in money because they're buying into the Urban Meyer, Trevor Lawrence goal, marriage, and you expect. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm paying tax dollars into the stadium and the guy that's supposed to be the patriarch of this thing is out squeezing college bunny tail. It's nobody's business. Actually, it kind of is. It is. Just like if somebody's just like, who was this? Was it? I want to make sure I get this right. It was Britney Spears, right? spokesperson for Pepsi and somebody took a picture of her drinking a Coke. It's like, oh my gosh, let her do what she wants. Not if I'm Pepsi and I'm paying you six million a year. I want you chugging Coke. Urban Decay. What do you do if you're Jacksonville? 
on the Jags. I guess I wait here a little while to try to figure this out, but you kind of got to look around and say, well, what do we do? And the answer to that, if they do decide to move on from Urban and there's an interim coaching situation or whatever, the guy that should be the next head coach in the NFL is going to be good. He's going to be like Sean McVay is out with the Rams, and it's Joe Brady, and he is in Carolina working with Sam Darnold. I know they got beat, but they're 3-1. and one. He's kind of got Sam Darnold on the right track. He built Joe Burrow at LSU. Look what LSU is without Brady as the offensive coordinator. That's a disaster. He may be more important to Orgeron than Malzahn was to Chiswick. There you go on that front. Uh, Tom Brady's return. I, did it live up to the hype? The game was sloppy, but that didn't matter. The fact that it was a close game, it came down to the final few minutes. Yeah, it, it, not every game is Texas USC from 2005. Not every game is, you know, the Chiefs 49ers come from behind Super Bowl. Not every game is that. And I thought as I was watching that, what's the comp for this? What's the what's the parallel to what we just saw with Tom Brady? After 20 years, he comes back. Okay, there we go. Because he's actually physically playing. The only thing I can come up with is coaches. I'm looking around trying to figure out who this would be in sports. Nobody plays for the same team long enough to come back and do something like this. They don't. I'm, you know, I'm looking around the league and trying to find guys that are late in their career that have played at some place where they'd come back and get this type of welcome. I mean, it's the it's the second highest rated Sunday night game ever. Second highest rated Sunday night game ever, ever. Think about that. In this day and age where everything's fractured and splintered and football, the, the Super Bowl continues to set records. But think about sports and ratings and records in a year where NBA playoffs are down or they're stagnant. Uh, hockey down or stagnant, really down. Baseball down or stagnant. Football all comparable to where we were. The ho- second highest rated Sunday night game ever? Ever? We've had Sunday night football for what, 35 years now? NBC for 15 or whatever, but... Even before that, it was on ESPN and TNT. Remember that? Back when you only had 30 channels, sometimes 15 channels at the beginning of this. So I, the fact that you got those numbers, I, I was just racking my brain. I, I can't think of anything. I, I thought of a couple things that could happen. First of all, Belichick's not leaving New England. If you leave New England and come back and coach against them, you could get back into that path. But again, you'd be duplicating what you're doing. I, can, I can't think of anything like in the NBA. I can't. Maybe down the road if Steph Curry left Golden State and came back, but it wouldn't be this. The only thing I can think of, the only thing I can think of, you can't, baseball wouldn't exist. I mean, we already saw pool holes, and I mean, nobody's going to stay around long enough with the same team. The only thing I can think of, and I've been racking my brain. You know, like if Dabo Swinney would end up coaching Alabama and come back and coach against Clemson. But then again, he's only been there 13 years. I The only thing I can think of is Krzyzewski retires from Duke this year and decides in a year that he wants to get back into college basketball coaching. And if Krzyzewski would go back to Duke. That's the only thing I can even think that's comparable to what we saw with Brady. It was a storyline and you were watching a movie that you hadn't seen before. And that's rare. That's rare. You're watching original idea. The guy that's the best at the original ideas to me in the last 10 years in movies is Christopher Nolan. I thought Interstellar was fantastic. Dunkirk was amazing. Right? And of course, the Batman trilogy is what he did to Batman with Christian Bale 15 or so years ago. Wow. But, you know, original idea movies. It's like, whoa, what's this? This is different. Game of Thrones was an original. The Sopranos was an original. It's a different look at a mob movie, but it was an original. I'm going to get the Sopranos coming up here. The Many Saints of Newark. But I I watched that thing in awe. Thinking, wow. What, what What is the sequel to this? Is there one? Tom Brady has now beaten every team in the NFL at their place. 
You mind if we dance with your dates? Now as he's beaten every team at their place, he has a winning record against every team in the NFL. Because the only team he didn't have a winning record against was the Patriots. He never played them. Oh, no. Now Tom Brady has a winning record against every team in the NFL. I would love to know if you could go through and find that where you had an athlete that had a winning record against every team he ever played against. Especially in this day and age where you play each other all the time. And now there's people that have played against everybody, but to have a winning record against everybody? It's remarkable. I just can't. The only comp that I can think of is that Krzyzewski would le- retire from Duke this year and then come back and coach in a couple years and coach against him. It's the only thing I can even think that's even close. Uh, Major League Baseball. Like the, the eye, was it Gus? On uh, the natural, the October Oracle. Talk about two fantastic wild card games, at least on paper. Adam Wainwright and the Cardinals have won like what twenty one of the last twenty three games. He's on the bump and he's taking on Scherzer and the Dodgers in L.A. Wow. Oh, and by the way, the appetizer to that is the Red Sox and Yankees at Fenway Park. <laughs> Where the Yankees just swept the Red Sox recently. That's awesome. It's great. I mean, to fa- the fact that we're going to get the Cardinals and the Dodgers, right? The two teams in the National League with the most World Series. And then you're going to get the Yankees and the Red Sox. The Yankees, most World Series ever. And the Yankees, the, or the Red Sox, the most World Series this century, the last 20 years. Those are your play-in games. And who's waiting in the wings? I mean, the Rays who are just loaded. The Astros who are, you know, good gracious. For all the cheating and everything, still managed to win 90-plus games every year. You had the Brewers, who we kind of forget about in the National League, right? The Brewers are just over there. And the White Sox, who everybody completely forgets about. I mean, this Major League Baseball postseason is loaded. Excuse me. Loaded with storylines. Just loaded. Gesundheit, Seth. And I look over in the National League, and I was trying to rack my brain on what World Series you want. You always want the Cardinals or the Dodgers against the Yankees or the Red Sox. Well, two of those teams are going to go the way of the Dodo within 48 hours. So whoever wins the wild cards are your World Series that you want. The one you don't want, the one you can't have, is the Braves and the Rays. If the Braves play the Rays in the World Series, more people will make landline payphone calls in America that day than will watch that game. Yuck. That the, the, the Ray, you know, and we're the home of the Rays station I work at. It's a good baseball team. It's a fun team to watch. But, you know, the old slogan the Bills used to have when they keep going to the Super Bowl and everybody get mad, deal with it, America, deal with it. That's kind of where everybody are, where everybody sits with the Rays. Right now, if I had to pick a World Series, right now, right now, on the spot, World Series, who's going to be Seth? I'd pick the Giants and the Rays. Because I know they're at home. I know they're the one seeds. They got 100 wins. And they're going to take on wild card teams that, you know, let's face it, especially if the Red Sox beat the Yankees, the Rays will dust them. And then you have the Astros playing the White Sox. The, the, I think if, if, if there's anything, if I had to pick any team in baseball, it's the surest thing. There is no sure thing. But it'd be the Rays going to the World Series. It would be. I have the Rays beating the Giants in the World Series as we sit right now. I'd love to pick the, you know, the, if the Cardinals beat the Dodgers or the Red Sox, I'd love to pick one of those teams. But good luck. You're going to pick the one team in the play-in, and then that team's got to go to... I, I can see the Dodgers, if they beat the... If the Dodgers beat the Cardinals, then you can come back with Scherzer in three, or maybe Scherzer in two on short... Re- if You you could play that a little bit, but with Kershaw being hurt and Urea, I mean, the Dodgers have the arsenal to do that. The Red Sox are the Yankees. Look... The, the Red Sox would be actually better set up to take on the Rays just because Chris Sale would be pitching in game two and maybe in a game five. Where the Yankees, you know, you're going to blow through your ace, right? And 
he's not going to pitch until game four and maybe pitch only one game in the series. If I had to pick, I'd say the Rays beat the, the, the Rays beat the Giants. Disasters. I mean, you think of the best case scenario. The base, best case scenario is Dodgers, Yankees, Red Sox, Dodgers, Cardinals, Yankees, Cardinals, Red Sox. Those are your best case scenarios for the World Series. Worst case, it's got to be the Rays and the Braves, doesn't it? Or the Rays and the Brewers. Oh, my God. It's the Rays and the Brewers. Mm. Mm. Oh. Nasty. Uh, really quick, Many Saints in Newark watched it. Thought it was good. Um, I love the Junior Soprano angle. I, I just thought it was—I thought it was well written, well done. The backstory on the characters—it wasn't about the Sopranos; it was about the Maltesantis. I liked it. Now, was it the series? No, and it wasn't going to be the series. What I think David Chase did was lay the groundwork. Was what he should do. He laid the groundwork for some sequels, but HBO. Get together with David Chase and all these people and beg them, beg them to do a series. I don't care if it's a one-shot deal where it's a 10-part, one-year miniseries, 10 year, t- ten episodes, two hours each, the next two weeks. Let's go. Or a t- 10 episodes every week. Oh, 10 episodes every week. Uh, a stretch of 10 episodes, a 10-week run. Every Sunday night, two hours, boom. Boom, boom, 10 straight weeks. Give me that. Now, let's talk about doing other movies. What you found out, it's tough to go from series to movies and put everything in there, especially when you have, because you need to develop these storylines and develop these characters. It's like when they keep talking about, well, maybe they'll make a Game of Thrones movie. Oh, God, please no. There's too much going on. You can't squeeze into two hours. I think my only thing would be The Many Saints of Newark. What I would love to see is a week-long run where it was one hour every night for five straight nights. Imagine what that would do. Hey, we're going to we're gonna do this where it's going to be an hour every night for the next five nights. Like those old TV miniseries. Miniseries like North and South and Roots and things like that in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Or 70s and 80s were massive. One, you had network TV. And two, it was just a must-tune, must-watch event. Give me that. I enjoyed it, though. Love seeing Polly Walnuts and Big Pussy and Silvio. And I liked it when... I'm not giving away any big plot lines. When Tony hijacked the ice cream truck. I just... It's funny stuff, man. Just enough humor with murder and mayhem. David Chase is brilliant. Give us give us a series, HBO. Many Saints of Newark. Give us a series. Be massive. These characters are strong enough. He, the actors are strong enough to do it. Give the people what they want. Harpon Sports, the bar, podcast, audio, media, radio, network. Follow, share, like, subscribe. At Harpon Sports on all the platforms. Facebook, YouTube channel, uh, Buzzsprout, Spotify, Apple Podcast. I keep teasing you guys every week. The website's almost done. She is almost done. She is almost done, and can't wait for you to check it out at HarpOnSports.com. HarpOnSports.com exists now, but I designed it, and you can tell that website design is not my forte. All the stuff's there, just it's not pretty. <laughs> it's like if you asked me to build a deck in the backyard or, I don't know, Put together something or rebuild a car engine. Not going to work. Or it's going to work, but it's not going to sound right. It looks okay, but we're getting that website done. I have it professionally done too. Um, looks good. He's doing a heck of a job with it. So I just want to make sure it's great before we roll it out. There you go. Remember, stay clean. Stay focused. Stay strong. Frankenstein. Have fun with your friends. <laughs>